got that estuary smell. Um, you can see there you've got like a one main channel and that's where we're going to fish today into that main channel and try and look for some more interesting water to put the lures. Start off with one of these pirate lures I think. That water is clear. Look how clear it is. Another bass theory in these parts is that if you put the lure right up against the boat, the big bass are sitting underneath the boat, hear the noise of the lure dropping down, come out and get it. Never been able to do that. Should we have a little go though? I'm walking across a sandbank, this is just after low tide, the tide's pushing uh, through a little channel out there. So the idea is, uh, sort of pushes the bass into the same spot, means the bait fish struggle a bit as the tide increases. It's all manner of foraging here, cockles don't seem to be in as great a numbers as they used to. I saw a compass jellyfish and it's common jellyfish here as well but it's the bass looking for those sand eels are what I'm most interested in. That's quite wide the river there but you can actually see narrows and narrows and narrows this sandbank over the right. The bit we want is where it narrows under the bridge and that's where we want to be under the bridge there I think as the sun comes up. Right, I'll take Nelly and we'll go and have a look. We only really just need to stay in touch with the lure here. Just feeling it, you can bump it along the bottom. Feel when it's mid-water as well if you want to. Now the theory is then that the bass sit in the eddies behind the flow of water where they can dart out and take those sand eels that are coming through in faster water. That's a theory anyway. What that means to me really is just casting into the tide. You can actually see it a lot better. You speed up the film, see the difference in that water. I'm trying to put a bit of a longer cast now, put it in that main channel. Can you see the cormorant there fishing? You tend to get the weed uh, when you're going against the flow when you're coming with the flow like that you get a bit less little flicks like that can help as well currents really strong so we're pushing out and almost just letting it drift round well people always say it's a dynamic river so it's always changing but it's so true last couple of minutes change and swap round the tide's coming this way on the inside and it's really picked up in the main channel it's come over a bank obviously hopefully it'll affect the fishing but if there's a really good book actually how to read water um, check that out that's fascinating you can get obsessed with this can't you Ooh, so we had a little tap here actually cast right into the fastest flow of water. I'm sure those bass prefer it when it's a little bit rougher in the river. Now it's just taking it down tide. It feels a little bit more weighty but it's <laughs> still a very small fish. Well, it's only a small one. The weed on the line. Here it comes. <laughs> Very nice.
see these boats, they're just turning now the tide's really starting to push. I don't know if you can see but there's a channel just to the left of them. What I'm going to try and do is just push it into that channel and maybe there's bass sitting. Give the needlefish a go. With this needlefish, again, it's just sort of staying in contact with it. You're not really winding it in. Just want to keep it nice and flat in the water. your clues there as to how fast it's flowing you need to get the weight right of these weighted sand deals that said tide slackened off it's worth trying something like this a bit, a bit different this is the mega bass sunk the zonk just sinks down really but i think ultimately um, and this is what a lot of the locals use are red gill sand deals white seem to be a preferable color but you can see there if you can get that swimming with the current like that even across the current that's going to be the best sort of lure had various sort of sand deal representations had a go with the line through sand deal another quite good one comes in various weights you're not actually allowed to fish uh, from motorized boats here and I don't think you're even allowed to use live sand deals as well well worth checking the IFCA website we'll, we'll come on to exactly where we are if you want to fish here though beautiful area Plenty of wildlife. I put one of those on. As you can see, well, I've changed it. We've got single hooks, obviously, um, but that's the best representation of a sand eel lure. Now, we've been using weighted lures because of the run of the tide, but the tide's actually quite slack at the moment. Um, so although that will sink, it's not shooting through over the surface of the water because of the tidal run here this pinch point between a sandbank this side and the bank on the other side. So let's give that a go. Certainly looks like a sand eel that I've seen in the water here. Sometimes the bass sit behind the current or just behind the eddies where the boats are. So I'm just gonna cast down, down the line there and then bring the sand deal back past the boats there. So you see that blue boat, I've just seen a splash there, it's probably mullet, um, just feeding off the hull I should think, but it is a good little ambush point for the bass, so first take, I'll show you how good I am at casting, rubbish, <laughs> I want to try and get it off the hull, dropping off the hull really, let's give it another go. Right. Had to correct that one a bit. See how these boats are turning now. The tide's looking a little bit more interesting. Sometimes it's worth fly fishing style. Let the line out, feel it, feel it through your fingers. Get a good understanding of what that river's up to.
native and non-native oysters in here as well. Loads of washed up shells in places. And there is an oyster fishery here. I don't think they're worth taking to eat. And again, I do check these bylaws. You're not allowed to collect mussels here and even these oysters, non-native, I wouldn't really want to be chancing eating them uh, next to the, the lot of farms upstream. So it might have taken me three extended morning dog walks to catch two very small bass. We are going to get some bigger ones before the season's out, I'm sure. But before you go, I just wanted to show you this scene here. Can you see there's actually mullet on here feeding just sort of a few feet out on the left-hand side? As we come into September and October, that really is the best time for lure fishing for bass. So. I hope you'll subscribe if you're not subscribed already and click that notification as well.